to wake up at the right time in the morning, it is necessary for me to use a vibrating wristband alarm. Then, when I get up, the first thing I do is I put on my hearing aids and I switch them on. In my job, as an educational audiologist and hearing consultant nationwide, I participate in a lot of different meetings. Which assistive listening system I choose to use depends on different things. For instance, who else will be in the meeting? Will I be the only one with this need or will there be other? The reverberation and acoustics of the room? And where in the room Will I be positioned uh, according to where everybody else is? Oh, I have here some children who go to school. Yeah, so it's a child who has a very difficult hearing loss. Oh, yeah, just a moment. I have sort of set audiogram here, so you can see it. At the here out in the high frequency area, he is difficult. It's actually the sounds here up F S T, which he doesn't really master in his utterance. At any meeting, it is important to also be able to lip read. So I preferably position myself with my back towards the windows. For he can actually hear the sound himself and hear what I'm saying. Every now and then, it can be more convenient to use public transport. When I do that, it can be really hard to understand the messages from the loudspeakers. So I really do rely on the information I can get from the different screens provided on the station. Indeed, also the screen on the train telling me when I will reach my destination and I need to get off. There will go an hour before the door can open. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every time this committee under the Danish Association Heart of Hearing meets, we use this very room because we know very well the acoustics here and also we know the assistive listening system. Five of the participants here also rely very much on the provided speech to text at this three hour long meeting and it helps us concentrate much better. After any meeting, it is our responsibility to give feedback if we find something in the accessibility that did not work as well as we had expected. And in this case, in the assistive listening system, we found hissing, there was delay, there was distortion. Både modtage og give information i forhold til and one participant experienced a loud feedback in the hearing aid whenever activating the microphone. We are glad for that it has succeeded to have a great with competent people. This causes confusion throughout the meeting for all participants, both those hard of hearing as well as those with a typical hearing. Throughout Europe, I have experienced these failures for various reasons at different places several times. I'm very confident now that it is more and more in use to give this kind of feedback and because of this feedback, professionally hearing engineers can service these systems. It is important that life is not just about work all the time. I'm very fond of my big dog, I have an Airedale Terrier, and uh, I so enjoy every day that I have to take him out for his walks. And for that, I use only my hearing aids. And it is possible for me to also meet the neighbors and have a chat. If I misunderstand something, then I will need to ask for repetition or for clarification, of course. Uh, hi, Valerie. I also have my three grandchildren, and of course I cannot see them every day, but I do appreciate the new technology now that it is possible for me to stream the sound from my iPhone to my hearing aids, and this enables me to FaceTime with them. 
When in the European Federation Heart of Hearing, we use online platforms for our meetings, for instance Zoom, they all provide an automatic speech recognition for that purpose. But unfortunately, that is not very correct, and it does cause some confusion and many misunderstandings. And I am an old teacher of the deaf, so I know we must have at least several receivers, and we should also uh, uh, be able to have more than one microphone, because otherwise uh, we cannot include these kids. We much prefer to have live speech-to-text interpreter, which is also possible, and this is a much better quality always. When watching live programs on television, it is sometimes possible to have them live texted, to have live subtitles on them. But unfortunately, they appear with quite a delay and sometimes also out of sync. Ah, did you notice this? What we like is to have subtitles that follow the speech that appear in the program so that uh, our brains don't kind of have to split up and work on two different tracks. En dansk familie vil passe bedre på klimaet og have mere tid til hinanden ved at bygge et hus der er 100% selvforsynende. Kan vi ikke lige slukke for den så kan This is why the Live Text Access Project, the LTA project is of great importance to us now so that we can have a higher quality in the speech to text the subtitling services. As a hard of hearing person myself, I base my life now on use of audiological treatment. I use gadgets. I add on assistive listening systems and I also use speech to text from time to time. There are many options and many choices to be made. And even though we have all these options, there are still challenges in our lives.